Hello, everybody. It's an honor and a privilege to get to speak to you for a few minutes in the preparation for a new year. I want to just say a few things to you that I hope will be helpful to you, strengthening, comforting, uh, and uh, helpful. First of all, God has not given us a spirit of fear. We we're told repeatedly in Scripture, some people have counted 365 times, one for every day of the year. Don't be afraid. This has been a year in which we have been tested. And one of the purposes of the test has been not for God to find out what, what's in us. God already knows what's in us. But for us to find out what's in us. It's important for us to know what we will do under certain pressures. You know, you can convince yourself from the neck up that you're going to do what you believe is the right thing. But it's not what you think from your neck up that determines your behavior. Proverbs chapter 4 says, watch over your heart with all diligence because out of your heart come the forces that control your life. It's the core of me, not my, not my heart in the sense of my romantic blood pump. But the, when the Bible talks about the heart, it's referring to that which I really believe at my core. That which I will do under pressure is my heart. Jesus said, out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks. What is in your heart in abundance is what you will eventually say. You know, a good football coach or, or any kind of sports coach knows that what you think you know is not nearly as important as what you have proven yourself to know on the practice field. Uh, when Jesus said to his disciples, could you not watch with me for one hour? Uh, the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak. He's referring to the fact that we may have all kinds of desires and willingness in our hearts uh, to, to do the right thing. But until we from our heart apply that belief to actual hands-on circumstances, like for instance, you want a better relationship in your marriage, you pray for it, you read books about it, that's all fine. But until you are willing to make the effort in everyday activity of making better communication and better interaction and better emotional giving of yourself to your spouse, all your prayers and all your book reading won't help. You have to learn to do it. That's what Jesus was saying to his disciples. He was saying, your spirit is willing, you've got all the right attitudes, but your flesh is weak. Then he said, pray that you be not taken over by temptation. The prayer that is effective in such cases is not, oh God, change me, oh God, deliver me, but Lord, help me learn moment by moment to obey you in my heart, in my actions. What I do and what I have in my heart are the same thing. Sometimes people will say, you know, God knows my heart. I, I'm sorry I did this thing again that I am so sorry I did, but God knows my heart. Well, I know what we mean by that, and I don't want to make anybody discouraged by what I'm about to say, but what I do is what's in my heart. It's not that what I do is different from what's in my heart. What's in my heart, it comes out in what I do. So if I don't like what I'm finding in my heart and I don't like what I do, then I have to ask for the grace to start doing or obeying Jesus' words about loving my enemies. It's not enough, it's not enough to pray for God to give me love for my enemies. Then I've got to find a way to show loving behavior toward my enemies. Does that make sense? I hope it makes sense. <clears throat> my point in all that is this. Two, 
uh, 2020 was a year of shaking for the purpose of revealing to us what is really in our hearts. I found some things in me during this year that I didn't like. I found some behaviors, some attitudes, uh, and some verbal uh, reactions that was not what God wants in me and not what I want in me. And so those are the things that I have begun to really focus on in asking uh, for the grace to, to respond to them differently. Uh, I did have a struggle with fear, but I did have struggles with anger because there seems to be so much insanity that is let loose. But the point is, you all, God is, I mean, it's, it's cliche. Christians say, well, God's in control. Well, of course, God's in control. It's kind of a silly thing to say God's in control, but God, God is not in direct control of every crazy behavior, or that would make God crazy. God is in ultimate control over the situation, but he allows the situation to manifest all kinds of craziness in order to give us an opportunity to respond with wisdom and with grace and with ever-increasing love uh, and proper anger in the right circumstances, holy anger. I'm not too good at holy anger, so I keep anger uh, under the cross and not claim myself to be manifesting holy anger very often. Most of the time, I just have to say, Jesus, I'm sorry I did it again. Uh, help me change. And he is helping me change. Now, look, in the, in the coming year, the coming months, uh, the coming weeks, you're still going to have opportunities to deal with fear. You're still going to have opportunities to deal with anger. You're still going to have opportunities to see that you're not being very loving and you're not being very patient and not being very gentle. Those are the most important things in your life. They're not the things that we tend in religious circles to think are important. I, I want to have uh, a, a better uh, uh, prayer life. Of course, you, do, you want to have a better prayer life. But the whole purpose of prayer is interaction with God and then interaction with people so that the life of God flows through you from that prayer life. I get too many plates spinning now and I'll, I'll not be able to bring any of them to proper closure. But let me just say one more thing in our, in our closing moments together. God is not interested in anything that will hinder the coming of his kingdom. And he's totally interested in everything that will further the coming of his kingdom. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. That's what God is focused on throughout the world. Uh, so what is number one news item on the earth is maybe not even on God's radar. He could care less about it. Uh, so beware that you don't let the news media tell you what's important. What's really important is how you're treating your family, how you're treating your enemies, how you're behaving in your interaction with the world, uh, whether you're manifesting the character and uh, love and presence of Jesus in the earth or not. That's what matters most. And so as we enter into these days that are just ahead, regardless of which direction things go politically, that's not gonna make any difference to God's intention and purpose. It'll make a lot of difference on earthly issues, but ultimately it will make no difference at all in the ultimate outcome. The ultimate outcome is the coming of the kingdom of God. If you keep your eyes focused there and you keep your heart open to the Holy Spirit in directing you and helping you to deal with the things in your character and in your life that are not yet what he wants them to be, not in some legalistic, introspective, condemnation way, but just in a, a joyful growing in relationship to Jesus and to other people, then you'll go forward in whatever comes in the coming year, and you won't be shaken when the whole world is shaking. Hebrews chapter 12 says, everything that can be shaken will be shaken. 
That's a promise. Just as sure as the sun will rise, just as sure as the earth and the sky does what God says it will do, God says everything that can be shaken will be shaken so that that which cannot be shaken may remain. Whatever in me and you is shakable is because it's overly connected to a world that is shaking. That will tell us it's time to disconnect from whatever it is that's shaking us up so that God's ultimate goal for us is that we become unshakable people, not moved by fear, not moved by anger, not moved by anything other than his word and his love and his grace and his wisdom. So let's ask God for extra help in this coming year for whatever in your life, whether it's private struggle or whether it's concerns for the nation or concerns for the whole world. Many of you have family members that are in other countries and you're, 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 you're troubled by what they have to face. Let's lift all that up in prayer right now. Father, you know who's listening today. You know the struggles that every man and woman faces, both in their private lives, in their families, in their local situation, in their international relationships, and their concerns for the country, and their concerns for the political issues that they face. You know all of that. And Father, knowing you know it is a great comfort to us, but we need to know that you know on a place that maybe we haven't really let ourselves go before. I pray for any, any part of us that has been complacent or has fantasized. Uh, say, well, I, I, that's too dangerous for me to think about. I don't want to think about that. I only want to think about uh, what makes me feel good. Well, Lord, please just help us know, help us know the, the difference between avoiding reality and riding above the storm. There's a difference between avoiding reality but right, and riding above the storm. If we're avoiding reality, the storm's going to catch up with us and we're going to be terrified when it does. But we are, if we are walking above it in faith, recognizing that it's there, recognizing that on the earthly level there's all kinds of dangers, but not letting it dominate us but keeping our eyes on you, then if it does break in upon us personally in some way, it will not shake us. We receive a kingdom which cannot be shaken. I pray that for every one of us, that we will be, we will be uh, men and women who are not shakable because we have let you take us through the shaking necessary to deliver us from fear and unrighteous anger and all other aspects of this that we've been through this year. I pray your blessing on every man and woman and boy and girl in the sound of my voice, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has begun a good work in us and will complete it in Jesus' name. Thank you all so much for letting me speak to you. I'm, I'm, I'm dressed up because I just came from a wedding and I hadn't had time to get my blue jeans back on. So I'm running, I'm running to my blue jeans now as fast as I can get there. Uh, I love you all. Mary sends her love also. In Jesus' name, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.